What's up guys, Cali Sunset Gaming with you again and today I'm going to be giving you the tips on how to emulate Jose Mourinho's tactics from his 2004 Porto team that won the Champions League. Not only this, but I'm going to be showing you also how to emulate the tactics specifically with the player instructions to use on your FIFA 20 career mode and your online seasons. Make sure you guys stick around because at the end I'm going to be giving you guys tips on the sort of players that you want to be looking for in the transfer market if you are going to emulate this kind of play style. Really pumped for this one. Let's get to it. So let's start with a bit of history. Jose Mourinho's two years at Porto is what brought him to the forefront of discussion when it comes to managers. Over his two-year tenure, he won two Portuguese league titles, a UEFA Cup, and most famously, the Champions League. I don't need to explain to you why Porto winning the Champions League was incredible, because on the face of it alone, it's one of the most coveted trophies in football. On top of this, he did it with an aging squad at a time very similar to now. A team outside of the top five European leagues would not be expected to win it. Obviously, as a Chelsea fan, Jose has a place in my heart, but I don't want you to feel as if I'm blowing smoke up his ass because I'm a fanboy. What he did with Porto is a testament not only to his managerial ability, but his ability to man-manage and also his unrivaled understanding of the beautiful game. So how do we emulate that one of a kind managerial brain into our formation and tactics on our FIFA 20 career mode? First, let's analyze the formation he used whilst I describe how it worked. Now, before I start, what I will say is that this formation is something that will take effort to implement and utilize as you play. If you don't actively play with the formation and the mentality in mind, it will be easy for teams to pick you apart. In the early stages of using this formation, I found myself conceding three or four goals a game just by pressing too early or not reading an attack that was taking place. It can get quite frustrating. Overall, to start, the defensive aspect of the team was solid, regimented and extremely aggressive. Going forward, it was more of an open, creative, fluid kind of football. The main aim of the attacking part of the team was to implement counter-attacks. The team lined up as a 4-3-1-2 or midfield diamond if you were to assess the team based on how deep the central midfielder would sit to assist in defensive coverage. With this formation, the width has to come from the fullbacks. Jose had a left wing back slightly more offensive just to ensure that they were covered as much as possible defensively if needed. What I mean by this is that the right back would look at his opportunities to step forward and mainly be as defensive as possible just in case he did need to slot back into that defensive mindset if they were caught on the counter attack. The trio of central midfielders working in unison would sit deep when defending, making it hard for a team to work through the tightly held defensive line of three and four. Once they had the ball back, the idea was to transition quickly, feeding it to the attacking trio further up the pitch. In terms of defending, the team kept a high line and maintained a press when trying to win the ball back. That said, the severity of the press did lessen in the Champions League campaign that we're analysing. In terms of the transition from defending to attack, the team would either use the left or right central mid to move the ball forward. Or what they would do is just have one of the centre-backs, Ricardo Cavallio. I won't go into detail about why I think he is an absolute god to just ping long balls straight from the back. The idea being to counter-attack quickly whilst the opposition were trying to form their defensive shape. In attack, with support from one of the fullbacks, they would look to attack rapidly. With the addition of the centre-attack midfielder, this would often lead the attack outnumbering the opposition's defence. So now we'll move on to the team and the specific instructions that you need to give to each player to make sure that this formation works. So for the keeper, you want a very aggressive mindset so saving on crosses comes for crosses and saving outside the box as a sweeper keeper the reason we're having him as a sweeper keeper is because we're holding quite a high line defensively so we need him to be as aggressive as possible and be that last line of defense if needed moving on to the center backs we have them both with the same instructions so stay back whilst attacking and also normal interceptions so the wing backs differ ever so slightly when it comes to the attacking runs instruction so on the left side we're going to have them join the attack interceptions normal and the run type as overlap the difference being with the right back you have it as balanced the reason that it's balanced is because what you want to do is have one that's consistently 
getting forward, being that additional man to get crosses in the box and every so often only having the right side making those attacking runs so he can ensure that essentially if one of them pushes up the other one is always there for defensive support but primarily you want to be using the left channel to be creating those attacking options. You want both of the run types to be overlap as well so that they're sticking on the outside creating that dynamic of having wide players to get balls into the box due to the volume of players that we have in the centre it's going to give us more opportunity to get the goals. Moving on to the middle of the centre midfielders now, that trio that we've got in midfield. For the attacking support, we've actually got them as drop between defenders. So this is going to add for the additional support that you're going to expect when you are being caught on the counter-attack or you are just in a defensive transition. We will have a lot of attacking options. So how Jose Mourinho set it up is that he would have that central player assist mainly in terms of defence rather than attack. The support on crosses, just balanced, interceptions normal. And then when it comes to positioning, stick to position and defensive position, you want him to cover the centre. So all that player is going to be doing is literally stepping back, stepping forward. The two wider players of the central midfield trio, they're going to have slightly different instructions as well. So with the left wing back getting forward, we've got the attacking support for this player down as balanced. So sometimes attacking, sometimes defending. Support on crosses down as balanced. Normal interceptions covering the centre for the defensive position and stick to position for the position of freedom. On the right-sided centre midfielder, you've got attacking support as get forward, being one of those additional players to try and outnumber the opposition's defence when you do catch them on the counter-attack. Standard balanced crossing runs, normal interceptions, defensive positioning covering the centre and the position in freedom as stick to position. That's something you'll notice a lot with this formation. Most of the position in freedom is stick to position. And the reason for this is that Jose was incredibly regimented with his Porto side. So having your players stick to position is the best way to emulate that. Moving on to the attacking trio, the centre attacking midfielder. First, we've got the defensive supporters stay forward. The idea of the team very much being that it's in two different segments. You've got the defensive aspect and the attacking aspect. The trio always staying forward to be prepared for that long ball or that splitting pass that is going to be coming from the midfield area. For the strikers, both the same instructions. So the support runs on balanced width, which is the default. Say all. <clears throat> So for the strikers, the exact same instructions for both of these guys. Balanced width, so they're going to try and mix it up, see whatever opportunity they can to try and take advantage of it. In terms of the attacking runs, they're going to be looking to get in behind. Obviously, this is the type of run that you would expect for the long balls over the top. The idea to hang off that last man and just chase the ball down to try and get in on goal. Defensive support for both of these guys is at stay forward as well. The reason for that is, like I said, because the team is split into two segments, the defensive aspect and the attacking aspect, all three of those attacking players are going to be sat forward waiting for that opportunity to initiate the counter-attack. Now moving on to the tactics for the defensive style, we've got press after possession loss. So high intensity, trying to win that ball back as quickly as possible and hopefully catch the opposition out of position. We have the width on at four. So even though we've got the wing backs, what we want to do is ensure that when we are defending, we quickly slip into that 4-3 mid block to ensure that we can not allow the opposition to pass. For the depth, we want the line quite high to emulate Jose's style. Winning the ball back around that midfield area is really important. The only negative aspect to this is that you may fall victim to the long ball. If you are playing against a 4-3-3, expect long balls to be going over the top. But if you can plan it well enough, you can start to utilise the offside trap very much as Jose did in real life. For the offensive style, we've gone for long balls. So that opportunity to get a long ball straight over the top, that attacking trio waiting for the opportunity to pounce. This doesn't mean that every single attack that you do has to be a long ball, but that's the main aim. You want to be looking for that opportunity just to feed that ball straight over the top to the attacking trio. Failing that, you can work through the middle. And if you are catching a team on the counter-attack, the thing is you're going to have so many players flooding forward that there's a very, very high chance that you are going to be outnumbering the opposition. For the width, we've set this at six. So 
quite a balanced width in terms of overall formations nothing too extreme just slightly above half that way we can ensure that the wing backs are utilizing that position and we've got an even spread across the midfield for players in the box we've got this set at six as well this one's probably up for debate um, again it's purely down to how you feel comfortable you'll see me say that in a lot of the videos that i do it's just because i know that you guys that are watching the videos some of you are better at defending than others obviously if you are inclined to take more risks and you want to do that you're well within your right to but obviously the only downside is because of the high line depending on the type of team that you're playing with if you haven't got large squad depth get to the 60th 70th minute you could get caught on the counter attack and unfortunately if you have got a lot of players in the box and your players are a little bit tired because you haven't got the squad depth to rotate over the course of a season it could really catch you out so just be mindful of that again these bottom three are always purely up for debate on what you feel comfortable with for me i've gone for three in terms of the corners and three in terms of the free kicks as well but overall it's down to you guys once you've got all this sorted, you're ready to go. But like I mentioned before, it's important to keep in mind the style of play whilst playing with this formation. Keep in mind that the aim of the game is long ball, counter-attacking football. The best way to think of this formation is the defensive part of the team and the attacking trio being two separate parts. The aim is to get the ball to the attacking trio. Don't build up from the back. The formation isn't catered for this. You'll find yourself taking pressure in scenarios that you're in charge of and it can put you on the back foot immediately. I want to give you guys some tips on the kind of players you can buy to help you with this formation. Just a reminder, this is not a buy a superstar to make your team better, as the idea of these videos is to be able to help you to implement this style to any team. So what I will do is let you know the type of players to buy and then you can search the market and find someone that suits this in your price range. As expected, you're going to need wing backs with a high work rate for both attacking and defending. You want an attacking midfielder with high passing as he's going to be a player involved in most of your attack throughout a game. If you can manage to get one with a decent shooting ability too, this will help as this is going to be a player often coming into the box to assist with those counter attacks. For strikers, I found this formation goes best with a little and large approach. One striker being tall and strong, good heading ability and the other being fast able to latch onto those threaded through balls on the breakaway. Obviously, in terms of the type of players that you get, they're just my tips from my experience from just playing through a season with this formation. Like I said, at the very beginning, it's quite difficult to get used to, but once you do get used to it, it pretty much tore the Portuguese league apart when I played with it. In the Champions League, it's a little bit more difficult. You're coming up against a lot of teams that are playing a 4-3-3. Expect to experience them kicking the ball out wide, long, over the top. Remember, you've got a very high line. Like I said before, expect those balls over the top for players that are rapid, fast, nippy to try and catch you on the counter-attack. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've been really enjoying doing these formation analysis of the season. If you've got any other suggestions, please do make sure that you leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll try and get round to it. There's a lot of people that have commented so far and I'm honestly so grateful for the people that have tuned in and the people kind enough to subscribe to this content. The footage for this video was taken from a game against Benfica where I was using the slider settings that I've got in one of the videos that I've posted on my channel. If like me, you really enjoy career mode but you find legendary way too easy and ultimate difficulty way too hard, please do make sure that you check out that video because it's going to give you all the information that you need to be able to adjust the sliders and get the most competitive experience from FIFA 20. I also want to thank you guys as well because my personal target for the end of this month was to hit 350 subs. I started August at 300 and now I've just hit 371. So you guys are absolutely awesome. Honestly, I'm so grateful that you're checking the content out. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit subscribe to get loads more FIFA content just like this. Thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you guys next time on Cali Sunset Gaming.